as Christians I want to clear something out right now there is this thing called prosperity gospel prosperity gospel pretty much teaches that if you are righteous you'll be rich and if you are poor means you don't have enough faith it pretty much originated somewhere in the United States it's not in the Bible it doesn't exist in other countries but in America you'll hear a lot our church actually probably gets accused of preaching prosperity gospel we don't prosperity gospel <laughs> is not it's good if you're not a Christian because the focus of prosperity gospel is always on money and on temporary things which fade away if you believe in prosperity gospel you get disappointed if you don't get the prosperity and you begin to question your relationship with God she didn't because she didn't believe in prosperity gospel she's followed God for God's sake people decided to combat and say prosperity gospel is wrong so they created in America another gospel called poverty gospel which the poverty gospel says this is so bad when people believe that if you are righteous you will be rich so let's create another one where if you're poor you're pious and if you're wealthy you're wicked and the poverty gospel has another scripture which is completely fabricated money is the root of all evil it's not in the bible but it is in the poverty gospels theology the prosperity gospel the danger with prosperity gospel is this is a lot of times the only people who are rich is those who preach it <laughs> let's face it i've been to places that broke my heart where pastor has four people on the staff to guard his car outside and the woman that's there i paid for her water because she didn't have money to buy water in the lobby any kind of time i preach the gospel that only works for me and you have to pay for it that's not biblical gospel in the new testament the scripture says the church prospered church prospered not the apostles apostles were doing good but the bible says nobody in the church had no lack my goal is not to preach something that you sow into me you bless me that is not the christian gospel that's a man-made gospel we're gonna step on some cows right now but the other gospel is as bad as the prosperity gospel the other gospel says this god wants you to be poor sick busted and disgusted the crazy part is people preaching it don't live it they live in a nice neighborhood their car is about twenty-five thousand dollars paid by cash their children go to the best schools and to the best universities they have highest education paid full they have a good medical insurance they have everything good now they're not like the prosperity gospel but they're doing very good but they tell you you should not do good when the service is over they teach their children live honest why so you stay out of debt listen to Dave Ramsey why so you can save money and have a good retirement so they live very hard make sure that they prosper but on Sunday morning that they, that they, they tell everybody prosperity is not God's will for your life healing is not God's will they have six pills in their purse and the very day they preach the sickness is good to take those pills why so they live a little bit longer I see hypocrisy in the poverty gospel because if God really wants you to be poor why don't you choose the lowest income neighborhood and live in that why don't you don't send your kids to school what why do you send them to university send them to serve somewhere and why do you live drive a nice car why don't you ride a bicycle why do you have a garage over your car you don't need a house live in the hut live poor as you preach and I see hypocrisy I see in one area that is bad and the other area is worse what do we preach what did Jesus preach I never see Jesus preach poverty gospel or prosperity gospel he only had one gospel to preach it's the gospel of the kingdom he told to preach the gospel of the kingdom he preached the gospel of the kingdom and he says and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached and then the end will come he didn't say the gospel of poverty he didn't say the gospel of prosperity he says the gospel of the kingdom when Jesus was born he was born as a king wise men came to look for a king not a president not a teacher not a Jewish Messiah a king when he became mature at the age of 30 he said repent 
for the kingdom of God is near. He didn't say repent so you don't go to hell. He even said that salvation is not escaping hell. He said salvation is a birth into a kingdom. He didn't do deliverance to prove that he's better than the devil. He did deliverance to manifest that the kingdom of God is, has come on this earth when deliverance happens. He taught parables and stories not to illustrate successful life on this earth but to illustrate kingdom life on this earth. And when he died they put a sign over his head that said the king of the Jews. When he came back from the dead, the scripture says in book of Acts, he taught his disciples on the kingdom of God so much they dared to ask, is this now the Lord you're restoring the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus was saying again and again, the kingdom I came is to start is a little bit different. It's not political, it's private. It starts in here. It's the rule of God in the heart of man. But that rule, it comes out of the heart of man into every area of their life. The kingdom I came to start is the kingdom that Daniel prophesied that in the days of the kings God of heaven will establish a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. It will not be given to any other man. It itself will crush all other kingdoms and stand forever. Jesus is the king. Somebody give Jesus the king some glory right now. Jesus the king deserves the praise. Jesus the king deserves worship. Some people say, why do you worship Jesus? Because He is our King. He is our Lord. Yes, He is our Savior. But church, do not get mistaken. We don't preach religion. We preach the kingdom. Our Jesus was not voted into power. He does not get voted out of power. He was born a King. He didn't become a King. His Word is His constitution. In the kingdom, the king is the most important person. In prosperity gospel, you are the most important. In poverty gospel, your problems are the most important. In the kingdom, first and foremost is the king. So, do you believe in prosperity gospel? I believe in the better gospel. The gospel of the kingdom. But let me remind you, it's a gospel, meaning it's a good news. Kingdom is a good news.